Okay, so uh, welcome back to another lesson in grade 12 physics. Uh, today we're going to combine a whole bunch of stuff that we know about electric fields and magnetic fields, and we're going to put them all together. And we're going to use this information to determine the mass of an electron. And uh, this is called the charge to mass ratio. So the subtitle of this little lesson is called How the Mass of the Electron Was Determined. In fact, um, this little experiment did not determine the mass of the electron. Um, it wasn't until a little while later that uh, Millikan came along and, uh, was, and provided us with a charge on electron that the mass could actually be de determined. But what was determined using today's information was the charge to mass ratio of the electron. So um, as you can see from this slide, to measure the mass of an electron or any charged particle, we cannot simply place the particle on a scale to take its mass, of course. It's simply too small. So another way had to be used to indirectly calculate this mass. The determination of the mass of an electron was actually conducted by a scientist named J.J. Thompson several years before Millikan came up with the charge on an electron. So let's just review what we know about um, electric fields and magnetic fields before we go any further. A situation like this where we have a magnetic field and it's coming out of the board and I have an electron here and this electron is moving in this direction uh, through this magnetic field I can uh, use my right hand rule for magnetic fields and I can determine that this electron will move in a circular arc that will look something like that. And if that is the case, I can do some uh, dynamics here, and I can say that I know that some of the forces on this electron are equal to force magnetic. And if that's the case, then I can say that some of the forces on this electron are equal to, as we learned on Friday, the velocity of the electron times the charge on the electron times the strength of the magnetic field. And if I do that, and I know that this is circular motion, I can say um, that all of this is m times v squared divided by the radius, and that radius is measurable, and uh, that is equal to v times q times the strength of the magnetic field. And we actually learned all of this on Friday. Now with some interesting manipulation, I can go through, and I'm just going to move this equation up here, um, I end up with the fact that v um, times m all over r is equal to q times the strength of the magnetic field. And so I've just canceled out uh, one of the velocities on um, this side of the equation and I've and resulted in taking the square out of that as well. Um, with a little bit more manipulation, what I can show is um, that v divided by r times the strength of the magnetic field is equal to Q, the charge on the electron, divided by the mass of the electron. And 130 years ago, this was very interesting information because it meant that we would have several quite potentially measurable um, parameters here. So the velocity of the electron, the radius of its motion, and the charge on a magnetic field, which would give us the ratio of the charge of the electron divided by the mass of the electron. And this was something that made people think that perhaps the mass and charge of the electron were both measurable. Now at the same time it was known that if we took an electron, as we have here, and we put it between two charged plates, you'll remember this from our electricity unit, um, that if we have a negative plate on top and a positive plate on the bottom, and we direct the electron through um, this situation, we end up having uh, something very similar to projectile motion and um, we can see that it would eventually crash, the electron would eventually crash into the positive plate. In this case, unlike with the magnetic field, we have that the sum of the forces on the electron right now is equal to Fe um, and Fe in this case is equal to the charge on the electron times the strength of the electric field. So this was also some very important information when J.J. Thompson was analyzing his um, investigation. So the 
genius of what they ended up doing um, in this investigation for the charge to mass ratio of an electron was they built a cathode ray tube. And what that cathode ray tube um, had was both a set of charged plates as well as um, a very strong magnetic field. So you can see here the um, electric field plates on the top and the bottom. And you can see that the positive plate is on the top. So the electrons would travel through the system and be pulled upwards. Okay, And you can see that there is um, a set of coils, a very strong electromagnet, as is shown here. There's an electromagnet on this side and an electromagnet right here as well. And you can see that the north pole of that electromagnet is here, while the south pole of the electromagnet is here. And if you were to use your right hand rule and figure it out, you would see that that force would pull down on the electrons as they are shot through this apparatus. So if we do that, we end up with this very interesting situation where we have the sum of the forces on these electrons is equal to zero if we dial the current and the voltage in the coils and the plate respectively correctly. And we end up with the fact that the force on those is equal to Fe plus Fm. And so if the if we can dial it up so the electrons come out completely straight, then we see that the um, electrostatic force, Fe, operating up is equal to F m operating down and there is a cancellation I guess of the charge of the forces and we end up with this scenario where we have F e the force electrostatic is equal to F m so if we have that situation where the force of electrostatics operating up and the force of magnetism operating down is the same on um, the electron then we can say that the electric field strength times the charge on the electron is equal to um, V times Q times the electric, or sorry, the magnetic field strength. And if we do that, then we can go through and we, of course, can cancel out the Qs and we end up with this interesting equation. You see, V, the, the velocity of an electron, is extremely hard to measure as well, of course, um, because we don't have the ability to measure them very easily and they're very rapid but we can measure an electric field strength because we know the voltage and we know the gap difference and we can measure the strength of a magnetic field because we know the current and we know the the uh, size of the coils and so what we end up with is the fact that the electric field strength divided by the magnetic field strength will give us the the velocity of so based on this we can put these two equations that we've developed today together um, in order to determine a number of the unknown quantities that we we are dealing with in um, in in uh, with electrons so if we take um, the fact that Q charge to mass the charge to mass ratio is equal to V divided by R times B. And what we're going to do is we're going to take um, this velocity and we're going to substitute it in here. Then we end up with Q divided by M is equal to the electric field strength divided by R times the magnetic field strength squared. And this was an extremely important discovery. And it was found that um, the charge of an electron compared to the mass of the electron was equal to 1.76 times 10 to the negative 11 coulombs per kilogram. J.G. Thompson said this, we know that the charge to mass of an electron is equal to 1.76 times 10 to the negative 11 coulombs per kilogram. And then along came Millikan. And Millikan said, well look, by using my oil drop technique, I can find it, the smallest charge we can find is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. 
So what he said was then, well, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs divided by m, which is the mass of the electron, must then equal 1.76 times 10 to the negative 11 coulombs per kilogram. And using some fairly simple um, grade 9 math, they were able to determine that m then was equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs divided by 1.76 times 10 to the negative 11 coulombs per kilogram. And that yields of 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Okay, so with all the information that you now have on electromagnetic fields or electric fields and magnetic fields, you can now answer the questions on page 402 to 403. So I would like you to read over pages 396 to 400. Um, there's some very interesting material in there on nuclear fusion and the use of magnetic fields to contain an incredibly hot plasma, which we will be talking about later. And I'd like you to answer questions 1 to 12 on page 402 and 403. In addition, if you'd like to have a little bit more information on J.J. Thompson's experiments with charge to mass ratio, there is a PowerPoint in this folder that you are more than welcome to go through.